Hi, my name is Brandon Gracely. I'm a high school math teacher. We are learning about how to transform sinusoidal functions, and today it's just about the amplitude change. Uh, to start with, though, let's review quadratic functions and how we transformed those. This is the parent function, f of x equals x squared, and I have a couple of transformed function, um, different, different ways to write it. g of x is a times x minus h squared plus k. Now, this was the vertex form, you might remember. A more general way to write this for any function would be g of x equals a times f of x minus h plus k. You see the squared is gone there because that's wrapped up in the definition of f. So what these different letters do, these are called parameters. So a, if you remember, is a vertical change and it causes a vertical stretch if it's a large number, more than one or it could be a compression if it's a small number between uh, 0 and 1 and possibly a reflection if that's a negative number. All of those are vertical changes. The vertical reflection is reflection in or across the x-axis. The h value here is a horizontal one and that's a translation. So sliding left or right. Remember the minus sign there. If it's a left slide, we would see something like x plus 5 would slide to the left because it's subtracting a negative value. And the last one here is also a vertical change. That is the vertical translation. Now today, all we're going to do is relate to this letter a here, which is a number that is multiplied by the function itself. We're going to do that with a sinusoidal function with sine or cosine. So let's draw a couple of these just to remember how this works. So once again we had, let's go down to this graph area here, if we had f of x equals x squared then maybe g of x equals uh, 2 times f of x, 2 times f of x, or I could also write that as 2 times x squared. And let's draw these on a graph here. I'm just going to use a one-to-one -one axis here grab a pencil this time. So let me start by plotting f. You might have a pattern for this that you can remember. And can I get one more in? Kind of. Let me just sketch that out. Okay, and that's my y equals f of x graph. And to draw the graph of g of x, that's 2 times the graph of f of x. Every point is multiplied by 2. So the y value that is. So that point has a y value of 1. It's going to become a y value of 2. This is a y value of 4. It becomes a y value of 8. And so the effect we see is that this seems to get kind of taller or skinnier. That's another way to think about it. And I would really prefer if you think about it as being stretched vertically rather than compressed horizontally because that's going to be something we look at differently. So y equals g of x is right there. Let's do one more. How about negative one quarter of f of x? Or we could write that as negative one quarter of x squared. So this one's going to be a little bit different because it has two things happening. It does have a vertical compression because that number is one quarter and it's a reflection because that's a negative number. So instead of one, it's going to be flipped over and it'll be one quarter. Those are the y values. Instead of a y value of four, it's going to be one quarter of that and negative, so negative one. This value here would have been nine so one quarter of nine, or nine quarters, is right there, and it's negative. And we see this effect where it looks wider, but it would be better to think of it as being compressed vertically, smushed down toward the uh, x-axis, and also reflected in this case. So now let's relate those kinds of transformations to the same ones for sinusoidal functions. So I have here f of theta, theta is an angle, equals sine of theta, and g of theta is 2 times f, or 2 times sine of theta. We're going to graph these on the same axes. 
Uh, so I've got an axis here, let's see, to, I'm going to make that my 360 degrees right here. And that makes halfway between there is 180. That's 90. And there's 270. Now it's a good strategy to break your graph up into four equal sections like this because those are going to give us the key points for our graph. Now, vertically here I've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm just going to choose this as one and this as two. Negative one and negative two. Okay, so I'm going to start by graphing f, which is sine of theta. Starts at zero, zero goes up to 90 and 1, back down to 0, negative 1 at 270, and back up to 0 again. So I'll just sketch this one in. Arrows on each end, because that continues forever. Could have been a little smoother in there, sorry about that. So that is y equals f of theta. That's our theta axis, that's the y axis. Now the other function, g of theta, is two times this one. All of the y values are doubled. So this y value, zero, is doubled and it'll still be zero. This y value, one, is doubled and becomes two. This y value is doubled and becomes zero negative 1 becomes negative 2 and back up to 0 again and so what we see is exactly the same shape but all the parts above the axis get stretched up and all the parts that are already below it get stretched down their y values are doubled they don't get pulled up the way you might be thinking of with a parabola they're just pulled away from the horizontal axis so we'll see something like this Once again, that also continues like that, and that is y equals g of theta. Okay, let's go on to another one. Here we have sine of theta and half of sine of theta. So the a value here, the number multiplied by the function, is 1 half. I'm going to quickly sketch out sine of theta, and then we'll sketch out half of sine of theta. This time for my graph, I'm going to use a different vertical scale because I want you to be able to see what this looks like. I'm going to put there this one. Uh, oops, I missed it. There's negative one. So here's my sine function. f of theta. Now in order to draw one half of sine of theta, I'm going to multiply all of the y values that the function gave us by one half. Zero times a half is zero. This is one times a half is only a half. Zero times a half is zero. Negative one times a half is negative one half and back up to zero again. So this function is on the inside this time. It's smaller than or closer to the axis than our original parent function. And so it lives in there. Now the two graphs we just drew look pretty similar to each other. Now I did change the scale a little bit, but this is the transformed function, which is smaller than or closer to the axis than the original sine function. Let's try just one more. Here we have sine of theta and negative sine of theta. Get started again. So there's f of theta, and let's do negative sine of theta, or negative f of theta. Every one of these y values will be multiplied by negative 1. We don't really write the 1 there, but it's there. Negative 1, the negative version of each of these, the negative y value. So this value 1 will be reflected and become a negative 1. Zeros are still zeros, 
negative one will become a positive one. So this has the effect of reflecting or flipping over the original function. So in general, we have this idea here. Multiplying a sinusoidal function by some value a that is not equal to zero really just multiplies the amplitude. And I'm going to come back to this and continue this sentence in just a moment. Let's return to our graphs and see how that happens. Here, our original amplitude is 1, because this was sine theta. When we multiplied by 2, we ended up going up to 2 and down to negative 2. That is an amplitude of 2. So our original amplitude 1 was multiplied by 2. On this function, our original amplitude was 1 multiplied by a half and so the amplitude is now one-half. On this function, our amplitude was one. We went up to one and down to negative one. On the new reflected one, we went down to one and up to positive one. This actually didn't change the amplitude. Even though we had a multiplication here, the amplitude was not affected because we went between the same maximum and minimum values, just at different places, different times. So multiplying the sinusoidal function by a value like a, it multiplies the amplitude by not exactly a, but by the absolute value of a. Which you can think of is as the positive version of a. If a is positive, then absolute a is the same as a. But if a is negative, then we, the amplitude is changed by multiplying by the positive version. So in our last example, a was negative 1. The amplitude was just multiplied by 1. So that's one thing that happens. And the other thing that happens is sometimes we have a reflection. So let's read our sentence again. Multiplying a sinusoidal function by a multiplies the amplitude by the absolute value of a. And... causes a vertical reflection if a is less than zero, that is a is negative. Now here's a key point since sine, oops, sine of theta and cosine of theta have an amplitude of 1, a times sine theta and a times cos theta uh, have an amplitude of the absolute value of a. <clears throat> okay, so here I have a whole bunch of functions. I'm just going to um, draw the original function, sine or cosine, and then draw in the transformed function as well. Got to be a little bit careful with our scale because we have to make sure we have enough room to draw everything. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got six boxes. They're a little bit hard to see on the camera here, I think. I need to get up to whatever this will cause. Now normally cosine has an amplitude of one. Multiplying by three gives me an amplitude of three. And so I'm going to make that the top end of my scale. There's 3, 2, 1, 
negative 1, negative 2, and negative 3. Uh, and I'll just break up my graph horizontally here. I think I can do the same every four boxes. It's going to be 90 degrees. Okay, I think that's about right. There's my 360. And I'm just going to sketch this in kind of quickly. This is my original parent. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm doing a cosine function this time. Cosine starts at 1. Goes through 0 to negative 1, back to 0, and back to positive 1. And it comes in flat at the tops. A little flatter than that would be nice. Oh well, best I can do here. So there's my original function. That is uh, cosine theta. Now to draw the amplitude 3 version of this, multiply everything by 3, this 1 becomes a 3. 0 is still 0. Negative 1 becomes negative 3. 0 multiplied by 3. And then last we finish off with that one up there function looks the same but it's stretched vertically I'll just show the beginnings of those curves on the other side so amplitude 3 because that number is 3 and everything is stretched vertically okay I'm gonna leave the rest of these to you to try and if you have any questions of course you know how to ask me I just want to point out that you want to be careful that sometimes you have a reflection, like this one right here, and sometimes you don't. Down at the bottom here, I've got four more questions for you to try. Determine the amplitude of each sinusoidal function, but don't graph it. Just look at the equation to figure out what it is, and I want you to be extra careful with the last one here. Okay, thanks very much.